Here's how simple now goal setting is. It's not mysterious. You don't have to anchor, you don't have to focus, you don't have to visualize, none of that stuff. Here's how simple goal setting is, change my life. Decide what you want and write it down. I mean, that's how profound this stuff is. Decide what you want and write it down, make a list. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? What do you want to see? What do you want to be? What do you want to have? What do you want to share? What projects would you like to support? What would you like to be known for? What skills would you like to learn? Some extraordinary things you'd like to do, ordinary things you'd like to do, right? Silly little things you'd like to do, very important things you'd like to do. Decide, decide on all that stuff and write it down, write it down, write it down. That's how simple this stuff is. And it's your own private list. If it's really private, you know, on your list, put some stuff in code where nobody can understand it if this list <laughs> fell into unfriendly hands. Okay. And simple things, whatever. Foolish things, doesn't matter. It's your list. I had a little revenge on my first list. Budget finance, who used to harass me. I got two or three payments behind this one guy called incessantly. Said, we're gonna come get your car, drag it rear end up down the street in front of your neighbors. Put me down something fierce. When I met Shof, got my life straightened out, one of the first things on one of my lists was budget finance. And when I finally got the money, I needed a little drama in my life. Finally got the money to pay them off. I put it in small bills in a big briefcase. <laughs> Walked into the budget finance office on Wilshire Boulevard in Los Angeles. The guy who harassed me so often, his desk was about three back. I opened the door, walked in right up to his desk, stood right in front of him, never said a word. He said, well, what are you doing here? Didn't say a word. I opened up this briefcase, dumped this pile of money all over his desk. I said, count it. It's all there. I'll never be back. Turned around, walked out, slammed the door. Now that might not be noble, but you got to try it at least one time. <laughs> Pay off with a little drama. got to check them off my list. Keep your list with you. I keep my list in my journal so that I can go back five years ago. Here was my list and I'm a little embarrassed. Here's what I thought was so important now. How my philosophy has changed from 10 years ago, five years ago, three years ago. Here's my old list. Here's my new list. Here's what's valuable to me now. Here's what I want my life to be now. Here's where I want to go, what I want to do, what I want to see. Keep your lists of goals so that it shows your growth, shows your ability to change and grow. Your velocity grows and expands what's valuable. Setting goals. It doesn't matter how small foolish it is. Put it on your list. My Japanese friend, Toro Ikeda, put on his first list, a Caucasian gardener. Good morning. <laughs> thought that was good. I like that. Have you got this profound thing now in setting goals? Here's how profound it is. Decide what you want, write it down. Get together with your wife, decide. Get together with your kids, decide. Get together with your business colleagues, decide. Write it down, make a list. Okay, that's how easy it is. Now let me give you one more scenario on setting goals. When I started making my first list, Mr. Shove said, Mr. Rohn, looks like we're going to be together for a while. He said, I've got a suggestion for you. He said, I think one of the first goals you ought to set, you're 25 year old American male. Sure, you've made some mistakes, but now you're on the road to better things. You got a family worth it. Reasons makes the difference. And he said, you've got every reason to do this. He said, why don't you, among all the goals you're going to set, said, why don't you set a goal to become a millionaire? A millionaire. This is America. All the possibilities are available. Why don't you set a goal eh, to become a millionaire? He said, it's got a nice ring to it. Millionaire. Enough zeros to impress your accountant. And he said, here's why. Now I thought, the man doesn't need to teach me why. I'm thinking, wouldn't it be great to have a million dollars? He said, no, that's not it. Here's why. And I had one of the greatest lessons I ever learned, and I'm about to share it with you. This will be worth the price of being here today if you can capture what I'm about to share with you. 
Here's what Mr. Shove said. Set a goal to become a millionaire. And he said, here's why. For what it will make of you to achieve it. And I got one of the greatest classes in one sentence I've ever received in my life. Set a goal that'll make you stretch that far. For what it will make of you to achieve it. What a brand new reason for setting goals. What an all-encompassing challenge to have a better vision of the future. What for? To see what it will make of you to achieve it. And here's why. The greatest value in life is not what you get. The greatest value in life is what you become. Major question to ask on the job is not, what am I getting here? That's not the major question. The major question to ask is, what am I becoming here? It's not what you get that makes you valuable. It's what you become that makes you valuable. So Shelf said, set a goal to become a millionaire for what it will make of you to achieve it. Let me give you the key phrase on setting goals. Set the kind of goals that will make something of you to achieve them. Set the kind of goals that will make something of you to achieve them. Always keep that in mind. What will this make of me? If I set this goal and go for it, not only will I achieve it, but what will it make of me in the process? What a whole new concept on setting goals. Now, there's two parts to this, and then we're wrapping up goals. Here's the first part now in this goal setting for what you become. Number one, don't set your goals too low. Interesting, we teach in leadership. Don't join an easy crowd. You won't grow. Go where the expectations are high. Go where the demands are high. Go where the pressure's on to perform, to grow, to change, to develop, to read, to study, to develop skills. I belong to a small group. We do business around the world. You cannot believe the expectations at that level. What we expect of each other in terms of excellence, far beyond average. Why? So that we can each grow so that we can receive from the group, we can contribute to the group, something unprecedented. It's called living at the summit. Go where the demands are high. Go where the expectations are strong so that it'll provoke you, push you urgently. Insist that you not remain the same for the next couple of years, the next five years, that you'll grow and change. So don't set your goals too low. The guy says, well, I don't need much. Well, then you don't need to become much. Now, here's the last part on setting goals. Don't compromise. Don't sell out. There were some things I went for back in those early years that I paid too big a price for. If I'd have known how much it was going to cost me, I never would have paid, but I didn't know. So don't sell out. Ancient phrase says, count the cost, count the cost, count the cost. An ancient story says, Judas got the money. You say, well, that's a success story. No, no. <laughs> it's true, 30 pieces of silver in those days was a sizable fortune. You say, well, if a guy's got a fortune, right, that's a success story. No, you don't understand. His name was Judas. Doesn't that ring a bell? <laughs> Judas. You say, oh, yes, Judas, Judas, the traitor. That's right, the traitor got the money. Doesn't that change the story? And the answer is, of course, it changes the story. Interestingly enough, after Judas gets the money from becoming a traitor, he's got the money in his hot little hand, and now he's unhappy. Somebody says, well, if you had a fortune, how could you be unhappy? Well, he wasn't unhappy with the money. He was unhappy with himself. Key phrase, the greatest source of unhappiness is self-unhappiness. The greatest source of unhappiness doesn't come from outside. The greatest source of unhappiness comes from inside. Here's where the erosion starts, doing a little less than you could. That's where the beginning little infection of unhappiness starts, doing a little less than you can, not feeling that good about yourself. So don't let that happen. Judas is unhappy. He says, what will I do? He says, oh, I'll just take the money back. Walked in where he got the money and said, here, take this money. I'm unhappy. They said, heck with you, Judas. We got what we wanted. You got what you wanted. Out. They threw him out with his money. 
Jesus says, well, what'll I do now? He says, oh, clever. Should have thought of this first. I'll just throw the money away. And he proceeded to throw his fortune away. Why would he throw his fortune away? He was so unhappy with himself. And that's not even the end of the scenario. After he threw his fortune away, he couldn't change what he became, a traitor. And now in total abject frustration, he goes out and hangs his worthless self. Why such a tragic end? Because he was so unhappy with himself. He sold out. He sold out. He paid too big a price. Ancient script sums it all up and said, what if you gained the whole world and it cost you your soul too big a price to pay if you got the whole world? Don't sell out. Don't compromise your values. Don't compromise your virtues. Don't compromise your philosophy. Keep Here's the key word, beware. If Judas could speak back, he'd probably say, beware. Two good words from ancient script. One, behold the positive word. Behold the possibilities, behold the opportunity. Behold the drama, behold the awesomeness, behold the uniqueness. Behold the majesty, behold, behold. What a good word. But here's the other word, beware, beware, beware. Don't sell out. Mark well what you become in pursuit of what you want. But I'm inspiring you, hopefully, to set the kind of goals that will transform your life. Make you far better than you are, far stronger than you are.